In 2020, a bike came out that was, in my mind, so perfect, I called it, when I got to test it a few months ago, the best bike I've ever ridden, when you take everything into account, because it had the magical mix of just enough performance for the real world, a superb, superb price point, character, looks, style, and feel-good factor. Everything rolled in to one perfect package, and that was the Royal Enfield Meteor, but, what if I want to spend a little bit more money and have a little bit more style, a few more shiny things, and a little more head-turning ability? That's where this comes in, the Royal Enfield Classic 350. It is 4,400 pounds. It's 195 kilos. It's a single cylinder. It is 20 horsepower, and it gets a claimed, well, a tested actually, better than claimed, it gets a tested MPG of 78. That's 78 miles per gallon. I've been testing it now for the past week from the very kind people at K-Moto in Vilnius, Lithuania. And let's give you a full front to back walk down because, let me be completely honest, I've been wanting to test this bike out for, I think, around about six to eight months ever since it came out. After testing that Meteor and hearing that a Classic 350 was coming, I thought very possibly this may be my favorite ever bike. I, I have been unspeakably excited about this. So the day has finally come for me to do a proper test review. I've tested in lots of situations, so let's do it front to back. And before we do, let's start with the looks because it is bite the back of your hand, stop in the middle of the street and collapse. Good looking. Oh, it looks so good. Everything about it, the proportions, the detailing everywhere. First things first, this is what you would call, relative to other motorbikes, a fairly budget level bike, at least price bracket wise. But don't let the price fool you because Royal Enfield have come on so, so far with regards to quality. This is a breathtakingly good quality bike. I can't find any area on it that's not of the highest, highest standard. It is a stunningly well-built bike and it's as good as anything else out there on the market. Front to back, finally. Beautiful spoked wheels with, I love that. That's the sound I want here. Metal front fender. Uh, lovely spoke wheels, single disc with a, from a company I have no idea about, but it's all that you need. Great looking chrome indicators with this little cap. There is a specific name for that, but I can't remember. Lovely little cap on the circular headlamp. I'll just do a quick sit on, just to, to give you an idea of my size before I forget about it, because I'm six foot one and about 80 kilos, and that's the bend in my leg, and this is how I look size-wise. It is as close to perfect as you could ever possibly want. The position to my hands, there's, there's no weight at all on there. The bend in my legs when I'm changing or when I'm braking and changing down the left-hand side, it's all completely perfect. It feels like a bike I could sit in all day in absolute comfort. It's the most beautiful ergonomic position I've, I've ever experienced. And the seat, that is one of the most comfortable seats that I've ever felt. It's like an extremely comfortable sofa that you'd have in your living room with. I mean, look at that for a pillion seat. That's a proper pillion seat. None of these ridiculous ones that are about that short. That is designed for all day pillion comfort. Have a look here, Monica, if I get you to just come into this bit. This is what I will see. It's completely simple. If you go for the sat nav option, that will be integrated into there. Turn on the ignition. Very simple. You get a fuel gauge at the top and a couple of trips. Mylometer, odometer, and that's it. Nothing else at all. But look at the quality of the chrome and the finish everywhere. Start a switch there. That's how Royal Enfields do them on this and the meter, all very nice. The switch gear, all of good quality. Lovely chrome mirrors. It's got, I'll just get you to zoom back out a bit, Monica, single-sided pea shooter exhaust there with, let me get the key out because I don't think I've seen this on a bike yet. Before I get to that, lovely chrome inserts on the engine, beautiful finned single cylinder engine with metal, metal exhaust. This is not metal exhaust, metal rear mudguard. 
This isn't a, a light bike at 195 kilos. It's probably classed as heavy actually, but it's reassuringly heavy because it's made almost completely out of metal apart from the side, the side panels here. And just the second I picked up this bike, everything's made for ease of use for the rider. It's all so easy, you've got your tool, tool roll in there, everything else that you may need to check on, but it's all been made so beautifully. And the fact that you just simply open it with a key, you don't need to carry a screwdriver around like I do with the Bonneville to undo it. It's just ease of use, brilliant. It's got a centre stand there, so you can work on it yourself without any issue at all. It's got a lovely rear light cluster there, everything about it, just absolutely beautiful. While I'm busy testing out the Royal Enfields in Lithuania, my Bonneville's at home and I can make sure that I've got up-to-date tracking ideas of exactly where it is with my SysApp device. There's actually been a recent story about two quad bikes that were stolen from Latvia and driven on a trailer across the border to Lithuania. But because the owner of the two quad bikes had SysApp devices on both of them, he was able to get in touch with the Lithuanian police, track exactly where both of the quad bikes are, and both of them were recovered. So you've got completely up-to-date tracking of exactly where your vehicle is. You can go onto the app, always check where it is. And of course, if you figure out or find out that it's been stolen, you can get in touch with the authorities. And SysApp also have a new business solution whereby if you've got a fleet of motorbikes or cars or vans, you can track them all on the website, see exactly where every single vehicle within your fleet is, see the routes they've done, and keep up to date with the maintenance schedules of, of all of your vehicles. So, if you are in the market for a tracking device, whether you're an individual or a business, go and check out SysApp. I've been using them for, I think about a year now, and I'm extremely happy with it. It's always on my Bonneville, so highly recommended. Here we are in the beautiful Lithuanian countryside and before I chat about what this bike's like to ride, there are four things that I wanted to quickly discuss that I almost forgot. Number one, there is as standard a USB attachment, very, very cleverly placed. I'll just turn it there, Monica. You probably would never have noticed that right there. So you can see my phone, USB quad lock attachment, and that is a standard USB. I'll just pull that out so you can see it. How good is that? Just with a little latch there. Brilliant. So USB comes as standard and something I almost forgot. The exhaust note. Before I turn it on, this is one of the best sounding standard exhausts I've ever heard. It is beautiful at, at all speeds. Everything from from standstill, that beautiful single throaty burble, and then when you get it up to about 25 miles an hour and just give it a little bit of throttle, nothing too much, just some subtle throttle. It's a just beautiful, beautiful sound, so full of character and just a lovely, lovely throaty burble, exactly how a single should sound. So get ready for this. And it's a standard exhaust. So, on tick over. And with a few revs. Ooh. Oh, 
that's perfect. I really hope that comes out on the microphone because that is as good as it gets for character. Pillion Comfort. Tried and tested by Monica. I hope you heard that. Are you mic'd up? No, I'll just say in case Monica isn't mic'd up. 10 out of 10. She rates this as highly as any other motorbike she's ever been on as a pillion. And I, I see why. It's just... And this better than some other expensive bikes. Better than some cruisers, would you say? Uh, you know, like there's been some Harleys you've tried that, that haven't been yes, quite as good as this, yes, aren't there? Yes, as good as or maybe a bit better. Yeah. It's as good as, I mean, it's, I can feel that 100%. The softness of the seat, the bend in your legs as well. It's one of the most natural feeling with two grab bars. One of the most natural feeling pillion seats well. that I've, yeah, and on the back as well. That's really, really nice. That's just about as good as it gets. And for relatively speaking, such a small bike, superb. One other thing I wanted to get to. So I just plug my, my USB back in. Okay, practicality again. Something I noticed when riding around Vilnius. Cut that, Monica. The, one of the best turning circles I've ever experienced, I will demonstrate. turn I don't know if it showed up in the video but you can turn it at such a big angle that is a really really good turning circle one more thing I'll do I'll get straight on with you Monica lean angle and general weight of the bike boy okay let me be honest you can feel that's a, a big oh hey! you can feel that's a big big chunk of metal I don't want to lie to you and pretend it's light but it disguises it very well it may be heavy just as you're lifting it up but as soon as you get moving the steering the handling is very very light and responsive it's a well situated weight so it's beautiful when going left to right and just giving it a little bit on the twists and turns the brakes absolutely perfect the, the exhaust as I said beautiful sound the power just as I get my breath back Monica may just quickly speed this bit up this is what people will be asking 20 horsepower what are the limitations and I know this is what 90% of people really really want to know so the limitations everything well let me just explain the engine first it is it's a work of art and a revelation not specifically in the way it looks but the way it sounds the way it delivers the power and the way it has completely changed the perception of what a single is in my mind because you should not mistake this for some some Chinese some Chinese singles which just never feel too strong they always feel too vibey through your feet and just you don't get that reassuring solidness and strength coming through it but this this is on a whole different planet to any other single engine that I've tried and that includes single engines that are bigger than this 400 cc plus this is completely different don't discount this because it's a single cylinder this is exactly the blueprint of how single cylinders should be it feels strong it feels powerful it's never feels overstressed you're never wringing it to get the most amount of power it feels borderline lazy but in a really nice way it never struggles it never panics it is a a revelation this engine it's completely changed my opinion on what singles should be, I can't say enough good things about it, but that power limitation of 20 horsepower, if I'm by myself, it is up to 70 miles an hour on the motorway, no issue at all. In reality, it won't do much more than about 72, 73 miles an hour. It pulls extremely well up to 60, then 60 to 70, 
it will pull fine, but not at the same speed as getting up to 60. But you can sit at 70 miles an hour, the national speed limit on the motorway with no issue at all. There are no unpleasant vibes. It doesn't feel like it's struggling at all. It's perfectly pleasant. And with two people on the bike with Monica, no issue at all getting up to 60 miles an hour. And it, it's fairly rare unless you're going touring that you're going to be doing much more than that. Most of the time for most people, two up, you're going to be doing coffee shop runs and stuff. And if you're going anything up to 50 miles an hour, so with two people, it never struggles anyway. You almost forget that there's someone on the back. So the riding experience, everything about it, it is, it's first class, it really is. This single cylinder engine is unlike anything else I've tested at a, a similar CC capacity because often when I test out a bike of around about this level of CC, whether it's between two and 400 CC, for example, and it's a single, I, I am almost always not a fan of that single cylinder engine and I find myself thinking, oh, it's, it's a good bike, but the engine maybe slightly lets it down. This engine is so good, this single cylinder, I don't know, I don't know what kind of witchcraft Royal Enfield have done, but this single cylinder is so good that it's actually a selling point for this bike. I would buy this bike because the engine is so good. It's, it's superb. Okay, let me get on to the next bit now, which is the Classic 350 versus the Meteor. The Meteor is 600 pounds cheaper, it's about four kilograms lighter. It's even slightly more economical and the seat height is lower. So everything on paper tells you that the Meteor is a better bike. The only reason you would buy this over the Meteor is because you prefer the looks. It's purely based on looks, nothing else tangible at all. And would I part with 600 pounds extra for a bike that at least on paper isn't quite as good and after riding this now for a week and after having tested out the Meteor a few months ago I can say categorically without even having to give it a second's thought absolutely yes I would pay the extra money for this it's the feeling that it gives you every time you ride it it's like riding the Meteor but you feel even more special I mean just coming to the coffee shop now just just parking it behind me, just looking at it, just looking at it downstairs from, from our apartment. Everything about it, it makes you feel amazing. Yes, you have to pay a premium for those looks, but my God, they're so worth it. I don't know if there's another bike on the market that offers this amount of charm and character. Royal Enfield have taken the classic 500 and they've made it more reliable and they've made it better. Yet, all of the things that we love about that bike, 
all of the charm and the character and the soul, all of those things somehow remain completely undiminished in a thoroughly modern package. It really is an incredible thing that they've done. Look, the only thing, the only thing with the classic 350 that you have to get your head around and you have to come to terms with is the fact that 71, 72 miles an hour is the maximum. And that is the only downside I can find. But if you look at the bigger picture, look at all of the positives that it offers, the price point, the quality, the soul. You just have to get over the fact that it won't go above 71, 72 miles an hour, but there are so many other positive things with this bike. You can judge enjoyment with regards to a motorbike as the adrenaline rush that doing a wheelie or getting your knee down gives you, or you can look at it from a far, far purer point of view, the simple pleasure of going to a local coffee shop, doing the, the weak food shop, just pootling around town, going on B roads at 40, 50 miles an hour. This bike turns every single journey into a genuine adventure. It makes every journey the highlight of your day. And more importantly, and I really do mean this deep, deep down, this bike really and truly, it makes you happy to be alive. And I'll end it on that note. I absolutely love it. Thank you so much everyone for watching. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and let me know your thoughts on this bike and would you go for this or save £600 and pick the Meteor? Thanks so much everyone. See you in the next one.